Hey everybody, Brian here for QuantLabs.net. Okay, so today in this video, uh, pretty well confirms everything that I wanted to do. Thank you very much, IQ Feed, for getting me off of Windows and still being able to hang on to your awesome service. So I'm going to show you in this video on my Mac how to go about downloading historical U.S. stock data. Uh, I've been doing it for a while, well, actually a number of years, I should say. So couple of things that you need to be aware of. I'm using Java. Obviously, I'm using um, the IQ feed, uh, as well as I have a API license for uh, IQ feed as well, where you pay an annual fee. So what you need to do is, I'm going to show you on my YouTube channel, first of all, for all the extra tutorials and other third-party software that you can use that will make your life a lot, lot better. So come under my playlist. Come on to IQ feed, you'll get a whole pile of um, videos here that 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 is very useful for a lot of people for both Windows and Linux, or sorry, in my case, Mac, which I'm just recently porting off of uh, Windows for uh, a variety of reasons. Anyways, so just so you know, we've got the IQ feed Mac client. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I've covered that in one of my past videos here. To here 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 specifically on mac os now this should sort of work on linux as well through the wine project as well so you have that as well as you have these are the apps you have on the iq feed and in my case they support all kinds of languages java c sharp uh, c plus plus i should say visual c plus plus excel through dde and all that but it's a fairly complicated process to get your IQ feed running for through their API on Mac, and it's kind of tricky. This is what I do here: is I'm launching. It's called launching the feed. You um, basically get that app running. What you do is you put in all your details, credentials, the product ID, which is your uh, user account, all that, and you are ready to go. Then you use this app to connect into the uh, Mac client, which sets up like a, like a data server. And essentially how it works is once you get that connection established and what you're looking for in, in, the, in this case of Java here is basically IQ feed is connected to the server and then the info on their, on their um, servers connected. That's what you gotta look for. Okay, so once you get that, uh, then we can move into our other... Now, I've gone through all the other apps here that I found very interesting for my needs. Uh, so watch that video. Also, now we move into the world of Python. Now, before this, I couldn't get this working at all and not understanding how it works. But essentially what you're doing with like an unsupported language, be it R or Python... What you're essentially doing is opening up a socket and sending messages like commands to the IQ feed servers for what you want. And then there's the inbound socket and there's the outbound socket for your messages. That's basically how it works. It took me a little while to figure that out, but here we are. We found out. Now, part of the confusion part is, um, which I'll say about their um, support is quite good. Let me just make sure that I put this in here. This is, this is really useful. This came from their support, and their support's been pretty good. Um, during working hours, 9 to 5, uh, they usually get back to you pretty quick in a few hours. Uh, I've been corresponding back and forth with Tim. He's been pretty good at answering a lot of my questions. Um, some of them are not so technical, but uh, he's, he's really helped me out. And I wish all a lot of other companies had that kind of support especially on the developer side, because when you're developing, obviously you want answers really quick. These guys seem to kind of have it together, which is really important. So this is another uh, trick here that's important. For historical data, you'd want to re remote into port 9100. And that's where my confusion came in, because they have the, the stream living port, which is, as I said here, is 5009. So make sure you understand that before proceeding. Now, as I said, with Java, Python, I've been using Python now for about a year. And Python is, is awesome, especially when you get into the mindset of being on a Pythonista or, or p being Python 
what's it called, Pythonic or something like that. And you really will bang out scripts really fast. And you can do them in a matter of like, look at this, five lines. If I want to do that in Java, as in here for the historical socket, I mean, to do the equivalent, uh, where is it? Uh, this one right here. Look how many lines we got to deal with. I mean, a lot of that's all comments, granted. But still, it's just... It's just a complete nightmare to work with Java or any of these other languages like C Sharp and, and C++. But with Python, you get a lot done in your import. And you just send away your request. So what I'm using here is I'm using this um, IKeyFeed function or this package here. I don't know if it's called a package, but call it a package if you want. Found on... GitHub. So let me just show you that. And this is the other good thing about uh, Python. I'm using 2.7, which is kind of important. What did I just do there? Uh, okay. This is Firefox at its finest. There you go. Yay. Okay, found, here, here's the Ike feed package. Very simple stuff. You have your Ike feed, Python, and this is just the sample I'm just showing you here. Okay. So let me walk you through it. All right. So in this case, what we're doing here is I've created a, a new Python script called historical download. And what I've done is I've just set up a date range of for the last year. And you can easily manipulate this in, in Python. It's probably one of his biggest weaknesses, I find, date manipulation compared to, like, even though I can dump on C Sharp, their date manipulation in C Sharp is quite good. Python, eh. Anyways, um, so what we're doing here is we set up our date range as well as our uh, period and then download are um, basically Apple. Simple stuff, right? And what it will do is it will create a new, a new, um, a new, uh, a new file. Check that out. So this is minute data as of, uh, I believe, oh, right, from the beginning of the year, the date range that I wanted, which is the 1st of uh, January 1st, 2016, till yesterday. Um, so there you go. Now, the cool thing is you can see it's minute by minute. And one thing you need to understand about fee for what you're paying, it's damn cheap. You get historical data, minute, hourly, whatever, U.S. stocks, whatever. You just, just watch that API walkthrough that I give you. There's a lot of data you, you can go bonkers with. On top of, um, you can see how many entries we've got here uh, up until yesterday, till the closing, 16 o'clock. Very cool. All right, so let me just uh, run a sample here, okay? So that's minute data, and of course somewhere if you go into the, in the here, in the IQ feed, I'm sure you can easily change it around if you only want in a day, or uh, monthly, hourly, whatever, and usually that's driven by, as I said, the command that I, I that I talked about in your telnet or your socket. This is essentially it right here, H I T. And yeah, this this guy right here, that's what will determine what you want from IQ feed. Okay, so this case, it's, I think it's minute data, historical minute data, uh, and that's pretty well it. Okay, so let me just run this. All right, so there, there you go. It's downloaded pretty quickly in Python, the minute data for, uh, for up until yesterday for Apple. So if I want, let's say, um, I 
IBM, just as examples. So it's going to grab IBM, and there's IB, the IBM file right there. Okay, so let's go on to the command line. Let me uh, show you something else. Um, got here test IKFE. And we can do another, we can do a bulk download as well. So if I run this script on the command line, test IKFE needs two arguments. Let me just figure out what they were. Ah, it's been a while. Amazing how, you, how much you can forget in 12 hours. But um, believe are there? Yes, there are arguments I know that. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to skip that. Um, but this is easily uh, determined uh, through the code. Um, so of all the things that I've seen out there, uh, Python, Java, to download historical data, this is the best package to use. It's pretty simple. Um, the thing, other thing is, is that uh, I am using uh, Python 2.7 here. So uh, it is older, but seems all the packages I want to use don't seem to have any compatibility problems. Unlike when you go into Python, whatever version, a lot of the <clears throat> older packages without your knowing may blow up for some odd reason. And that's because of the Python interpreter you use. So that's why I always just stick with the simple 2.7. Seems I haven't really had a whole lot of compatibility problems. So for now, I just keep it. I, I want to get stuff done, not go in and have to debug stuff and why it works and what doesn't. So all in all, that is very cool. So bye-bye Windows, bye-bye .NET and all that. I now have the capabilities to download historical data and I've shown other examples on how to uh, download uh, real-time data, push it into my database, no SQL, let's say Redis, whatever. But very powerful. Um, once you get figured out, it's fairly easy. So just wanted to uh, give you guys the highlight with Python, I can feed, um, and the historical data here. All right, later.